literally for him because of his um, his work with strawberry fields which is uh, which is the music festival of nls and uh, rahul is the person the singer force behind uh, the start of strawberry fields and and i'm just going to go in thank you so i would have loved to sing but my throat's gone i'm just going to play an, an, an instrumental piece that i've written for rahul it's a jazz piece based in india this one's called for rahul
thank you, John. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, on behalf of the Center for Internet and Society and Inclusive Planet, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, to this celebration of Rahul's life. A special and warm welcome to the members of Rahul's family, his uh, mom and dad, uh, his wife Anjana and his uh, sister. We will follow a very uh, simple format. We have uh, seven people who will pay tribute. Uh, most of them count as colleagues and friends of uh, Rahu. Uh, some of them are only friends. Hello? Yeah, uh, I have had the privilege to be both uh, his colleague and um, I've considered to be, over the last one year, Rahul has been one of my closest friends. Uh, among his various achievements, and I think they've been spoken about at length, but one of his um, rather um, unspoken achievements was that he managed to get me. I was at that time a very hardcore trial lawyer based in Bombay. And he kind of managed to convince me that, no, why don't you move to Chennai and, and let's 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 work on disability law and policy. And I think that is, you know, it's it's a tribute not just to, you know, to uh, you know, his it was all about the, the passion that he had about his subject and about how he made things look so easy. That he just it just seemed so easy and it was, it actually was. Uh, you know, it was a great thing that at the end of, you know, sometimes working on issues, we could sit and we could joke about it or, you know, we could, because it's hard, working in policy is, is, is hard despite what everybody uh, may think. And it's nice, it was, it, was, it was really great to be able to work with somebody who could make everything, everything look so easy. And uh, one of the, the things that I, I was talking to uh, some friends and they seem to say that, look, Rahul is, everybody talks about Rahul as this policy activist and disability rights activist, but he's so much more than that. I mean, he was such a fun guy. Nobody talks about that. And well, he was, I, I don't think I've, uh, you know, I've worked really hard with Rahul and I've, I've really had some of the best times traveling to Bangalore, talking to people, <laughs> Just listening to him talk, I could probably listen to him for hours and hours about what we should be doing and what we shouldn't. And if things got too serious, he'd always have the perfect thing to say to sort of break the the whole uh, monotony of if if that ever set in. Uh, I would sometimes sit and talk to Rahul about great philosophical questions I had about my professional life, my personal life, and he'd he'd sum, sum it up in one sentence, which was pretty much to the effect of, "Oh, stop complaining and just just do what you want." Uh, you know, it's we don't. We, there's not like a lot of time to sit in angst about things, and sometimes I wonder if he had a premonition of sorts because that's kind of what his driving force was. He was always in a hurry. Uh, he was always uh, he'd always want me to, you know, uh, sort of. It, there were a lot of things to do, and there's still a lot of things to do. And I'm very grateful that we have, um, you know, even though it was it was such a tragic event everyone managed to sort of get together and show their support and the need to take things forward, uh, all the things that Rahul and I were doing. And uh, it's amazing. I was in Delhi uh, earlier this week for um, you know, a workshop and conference, and I met a lot of people from the disability sector, and it's amazing the kind of outpourings that you know have come forth at the conference and even uh, in general, we've put up a, a Tumblr um, with some of just extracts of some of the emails that I've received from people far and wide and people who haven't met him, people who have just heard of him. People would just go to the website and say, we've been following stuff through Twitter or something and we're just so, um, we, we, we just, we're just in some way everyone, and I guess that's kind of why it's quite poetic that it's inclusive planet that even people who perhaps weren't directly cons concerned with the work that Rahul was doing, feel that loss. Uh, they feel that pain. And it's amazing the kind of support that we've been getting. 
personally, we want to take all of the things that Rahul was doing, we want to take it forward. And uh, it's wonderful that so many people are trying to help in any any way they can, even kind words have been very, very important to us. And, uh, you know, I will, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's hard. I, you know, sometimes I, we were talking about this, that, you know, when, when, when this happened, we would be sort of consumed with, with a lot of grief and we think about Rahul and there was always something, something that would happen today when I was at the CIS office, uh, some, you know, uh, Sunil opened this picture up and I saw it and I was first, I was struck with, I don't know, I, I, my, I, I had tears in my eyes. And then I remembered we would have these arguments about how, uh, you know, I would say that, you know, every time we'd write for a newspaper, they'd ask for like a, a photograph. And I would keep complaining about how it was really painful to find the right photograph. And Rahul was like, you know, I'm so photogenic and we should always give photographs every time. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, we should, even if they don't ask for it, we should totally give photographs because I'm so photogenic. <laughs> so, so, and I looked at this and I was like, yeah, you're right. Oh God, you're so photogenic. And, um, you know, it's, uh, there are, there are so many, so many stories to tell about what an amazing, amazing, amazing person he was. And, my yeah i feel i feel bad that i actually only knew him for a year and at the same time i feel really privileged that i got i got one year of rahul cherian you know to nag and to whine at and to ask for his advice and you know to joke with and whatever else and whenever i wanted to uh and uh, i am going to miss you and i just hope that um we can keep him alive in some way. And if nothing else that I know that I'll always have his, his teasing and his, his jokes, I know that I'll always have that with me. He'll always be an inspiration. Um, he did different things differently. And that's what, that's the best thing that we get from the life that he led. Thanks. That's Uh, Rahul was my classmate in the law school for five years. I think a lot of you know that. And my memory of him in law school was as this really cheerful person who literally everybody loved. I don't think anybody had a negative word for him at any point or the other. I don't remember him saying anything negative or anybody I, either. And the memory I have, have of him is of him playing cricket with a lot of my classmates uh, out, out there in the field. And uh, in that context, I remember him as very closely and integrally being a part of the, the batch of 98. As, uh, as, Lawrence, as Lawrence put it, the batch of 98 almost rightfully feels that Rahul belonged to us in an almost possessive way. And his infectious enthusiasm, but of course, could not be tied to us alone. And I think there's so many memories of Rahul as part of the batch of 98. And I think every single one of my classmates will have one, if not more, or multiple memories to really share about Rahul as a really fun-loving, life-affirming free spirit who was sure to raise your spirits even if you ever felt low. I think post that, post the law school, I lost touch with, um, with Rahul. Um, Lawrence and me were, went on to become part of the Alternative Law Forum and Rahul pursued his work as an intellectual property rights lawyer. And almost four years ago, it was a pleasant and incredible surprise to see Rahul walk into our office one day. And um, he was a different Rahul in the sense that he spoke with a certain sense of a passion and insistence, which I felt was kind of new from the old Rahul I knew. And the passion and the insistence was really for the, for the freedom of disabled people. And I, I think he used the word of freedom, which is, which is what which I really, really liked. And I feel that in the course of the, the few years that he had and he worked in this area. He brought a new spirit of almost enthusiasm and life to his work in this entire area. And I think often within the field of activism, as Amba has kind of pointed out too, sometimes there's a sense of burnout. People end up feeling tired with the continuing struggle, and sometimes they feel a very, very little results. At times like this, one feels you need an infusion of energy, you need fresh enthusiasm. And sometimes you need just a sheer will of optimism to overcome difficult circumstances. And times like this, 
that you think of Rahul's really undimmed enthusiasm, as well as never say desperate. And it was combined with, I think, a deep sense of solidarity, and that was particularly invaluable. I think all of us insistently saw the videos of Rahul which is circulated on the web. All of us read that really, really moving tribute by Lawrence uh, in the Hindu again and again. And I think in one of these videos, this is a really moving moment when Rahul hugs uh, Marilyn Diamond, who is the national president of the blind, during a difficult moment in the WIPO negotiations. And the kind of hug kind of captures this, you know, this spirit which just reached out and connected, connected to people, really. And I don't know, and watching these videos again and again, which I'm sure all of you all did, the sense I had was that he just radiated optimism. When the situations were difficult and you felt that people would give up, and the, the person who's asking the question, asking him, how do you feel? Do you feel pessimistic or optimistic? Raoul's answer all the time was, I'm optimistic. How bad the situation was, the answer was, I'm optimistic. And somewhere, I think, you, the sense you got with him is that after all, tomorrow is another day. And you can't really keep him down. And somehow you feel, felt with him that he had to win in the end. Because some, some of, something of that insistence, saying that, yes, we can make a difference, was really there. And I think somewhere, quite obviously and quite powerfully and really, really strongly, the loss of Rahul is felt most deeply in his intimate family circle. It's felt definitely in the class of 98. And it's also felt in the world of those who knew him as this really inspiring or inspired activist. But I also found totally, totally amazing was that there was an ability to inspire which he had, which really transcended the world of those who knew him personally. Seasoned human rights activists who read the tribute, uh, tribute in the Hindu by, uh, by Lawrence called me up and asked me, who is, who is Rahul Chaitin? Who is that wonderful man? Why is it that we never met him in the alternative law forum? Professor Hasan Mansoor, who is really this doyen of the human rights movement in, in, in Bangalore, uh, he called up one day, one day after reading the Hindu tribute and his entire response was, uh, I read that tribute and I, the question I want to ask you is, why is it that we never met that wonderful young, wonderful young man? In, in your office at any point in time. And Professor Mansur goes, went on to say that it's really removing. He said that I, he said that I want to continue living so, so that I can continue to be inspired by people such as Rahul. So in a sense, I feel that what the tribute by Lawrence really did as far as I was concerned was that it captured perfectly not only the spirit that is Rahul Charin, but also the, what is life in a sense meant to almost perfect strangers. And I think the, once again, the tribute is something I think all of us read over and over again. I'll read you one paragraph from that. Rahul leaves behind an important legacy in terms of his work, but a far more important one on how we understand the very idea of a free spirit. His singularity, while irreplaceable, provides us with a vocabulary of thinking of human rights struggles as really a right to the maximum enjoyment of life and doing it with a sense of lightness. Once again, going back to the videos, I saw Rahul eloquently describe himself, saying that I call myself a freedom fighter, not just a disability activist, coming as I do from the land of Mahatma Gandhi. I don't think I was the only one who felt that sense of absolute inspiration in just seeing that very, very powerful video moment. And what he seemed to do is make a powerful connection to the wider history of struggle in this country and the struggle for freedom in really its multifaceted multi dimensions. Just by invoking Gandhi, you begin to see his disability work really as a direct continuation of a struggle for freedom and the idea of giving freedom a new vocabulary and a new content. This is very, very important because I was just thinking of it, is that the question of disability hasn't really become the issue of freedom which it should be. The fact that disabled people still today don't have access to roads, don't have access to public facilities, don't have access to banks, is really something which tells you how important this entire issue is and how important it is that we really take this issue forward. And in Rahul's terms, it's literally every disability, disabled person is a disability rights activist. And I think once again, if you look at the videos, he very beautifully makes the point. I mean, once again, I was just saying that when he talks about his scooter, and talks of the fact that he couldn't get a scooter onto the airplane, right? And the way he puts it is for the first time, he's telling, he's talking about the staff, it's the first time that the airline staff are seeing this. It's only a matter of sensitizing them as time goes by and maybe next time they'll allow me to ride it into the plane. 
So there, once again, you have that sense of almost un undimmed optimism, saying that, yes, we can make a change. Yes, we can ensure that disabled people have the right to access public, public spaces. And I think this is such an important issue, also because what, what is Rao talking about? He's talking about 12% of India's population. He's talking about 40% of the visually, visually, impaired, visually impaired population really uh, uh, is, is, from, uh, is from this country. And I was trying to think once again, uh, what is this freedom that which, which once again Rahul articulates in, 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 the, in the interview itself? If you look at this uh, book by Martha Nazbom, she talks, she talks about the frontiers of freedom and how do we really reimagine what is this notion of, of freedom uh, really about? And really the notion of freedom is the fact that we need a society which is a more caring society. We need a society which is a far more inclusive society. We need a society which in some ways makes space for both disabled people and for caregivers of disabled people. As Martha Nazbaum puts it, I'll just read this out to you. The lives of either people with disability or the caregivers need not contain the stigma and insult and inordinate burdens that they used to contain ubiquitously and are often still contain. A decent society will organize public space public education are the relevant areas of public policy to support such lives and fully include them, giving the caregivers all the capabilities on our list and the disabled, as many of them, as, and as fully as possible. So really what you're asking for is you need to rethink the role of the market, the role of the state, and the role of, the role of society from the viewpoint of disability. And we're not just thinking, we're thinking of a different form of social contract where you're saying that disabled people have equal access, really, to the rights which everybody else is entitled to. So the other thing I think when Raoul says, when he calls himself a freedom fighter, he's really going beyond thinking of disability as a sector and work there as just policy work. He's connecting disability activism to really an older history of struggle against, I think, colonialism, racism, sexism, and for the very right to be human. And it's a form of almost inspired communication, which really puts the heart and spirit back into activism and communicates that really working on disability rights is not, a, not just a job, but it's a passion. In a very concrete sense, once again, I want to pay particular tribute to both the work of uh, uh, Amba and Rahul in terms of the entire Verma, Verma Committee recommendations. Um, I had a chance to be there in terms of the Verma Committee, to read through the, Verma, to the various submissions by various groups in the, on the, to the Verma Committee. And the, the inclusive plan submissions were really incredibly good. Because what they did is they made the point that you need to look at the Indian Penal Code, the Criminal Procedure Code, and the Indian Evidence Act from the viewpoint of disability. You need to make changes in each of these areas. And if you look now at the ordinance, a lot of the, a lot of the changes proposed even by the inclusive plan are really there in the ordinance itself. And a very special thing which Inclusive Plan Planet really brought to bear to the entire question of disability is giving it, marrying a certain kind of a legal intelligence with a certain kind of activist passion. And that's a very, very, very important value, value addition really. And having been in many ways a part of this activist uh, area, you realize that often the gap is that legal understanding which can bridge an, bridge an activist understanding and really take it to another level. So in a very, very important sense, I think uh, the work Amba, Amba and, uh, and, and Rahul did contributed enormously to the entire area. And I think that's very, very important that we try and, try and take this work forward. So in a very concrete sense, once again, uh, what would you think of in terms of how we take this work forward. Um, at one level, I think the relevance of the work is clearly there in terms of the work and what it really achieved. But really beyond that also, I think in many ways that each life dedicated to a cause such as this really makes the world a better place. Not only through concrete changes, but through the inspiration that such a life is to others as well. I think I just have to go back to the numerous people who wrote back and spoke to me about the inspiration that Rahul's life provided. And really, it's amazing. I mean, I was so amazed by the fact that these were people who did not know Rahul one-to-one -one individually, but were really inspired 
by the by the life that was Rahul, or by the spirit that was Rahul. I think for those few days also, I think all of us know, all Rahul's friends, colleagues, as well as perfect strangers, really shared news about Rahul online, and the Facebook feed, in that sense, showed numerous people sharing the Hindu tribute to Rahul on the walls. So in a very concrete sense, how do you take forward, really, Rahul's work, and how do you take forward the inspiration that he really provided? And we were just chatting, and thinking, what are the ideas one could come up with? And we had a couple of thoughts, really. Firstly, we were thinking in terms of uh, how do you create, once again, these are questions which we are grappling with having been here for 10 years or whatever, saying that yes, how do you create a second line of people who be interested in this work, how do you take for this work? Rahul unfortunately had very, very little time, so we were not really able to think of maybe a second generation of people, a wider group of people who can take this work forward. So I was thinking that even if you think of maybe a course on disability rights and the law, which you offer every year for people around the country, dedicated or in the name of Rahul and try and get as many people to this course as possible and see out of this, just spreading this knowledge and this information, can you build a dedicated core of people to this area of work? Because and the key thing we need are people with passion to really work on this entire area. The second thing we're thinking is can you think of some kind of an annual lecture in, 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 in Rahul's name once again, taking forward his spirit or the idea of the, of the work that he was doing. These are some of the thoughts which I had in terms of what one can do as far as um, remembering or taking forward uh, Rahul's mem memory is concerned. I just want to end in some ways with a, with a poem and I can almost imagine Rahul laughing at me saying that, you know, he's quoting poetry. But at the same time, I also imagine Rahul appreciating the sentiment underlying it. Uh, it's a poem by Neruda. It says, Should I die, survive me with a force so pure that you awaken a fury from the pale chill world. In all directions, raise your indelible eyes. Day in, day out, sound your mouth's guitar. I don't want your footsteps to vacillate, nor your smile to wane. I don't want my bequeathed joy to die. Don't come knocking at my chest, I'm away. Dwell in my absence, as you would in my estate. Absence is such a vast house that you will walk through its walls and hang paintings in the air. Absence is such a transparent house that without my own life, I will watch you live. And if I see you suffer, my love, I will die again. Static. Yeah. Um, we run an orga organization called Enable India. Yeah. We work for uh, economic independence and dignity for persons with disability. We met, uh, I think, uh, Rahul and uh, Ruben about many, I think, four or five years back. And uh, it was just like the day one, it was like as if we have met forever and we just started discussing about issues, top topics and how to go forward, what to do, and just kind of went on and it's like as if we knew each other for many, many years, I think. And uh, it went on, I think it, a uh, lot of discussion happened. <laughs> Uh, I think in that uh, journey, I don't know when Inclusive Planet started, how it uh, kind of went on. It was like daily as if it's a part of our team. I think it was just a discussion of uh, as if we are discussing with somebody else in my team or any, anything like that. It's always kind of uh, Rahul Bhai. <laughs> it's, that's what I used to call him and he used to call me Deepesh Bhai because uh, I'm a Gujarati. So it was like, uh, I think that was one of the things he connected with everybody just like that. It's like, you it, it didn't know. So it was... Uh, very, very cool. So, uh, and, and from there, I think it was um, one of the things basically we didn't know L of law. So that was good saying that, oh, anytime, just call Rahul Bhai and uh, get, get things. Copyright, Rahul Bhai, what do I do about this copyright thing? What do I do about uh, uh, contract? Can you help me? I have no idea what to do. So it was like, like just, just a call away and uh, get, get things going and all that. Yeah. Uh, so it was, I think, and more and more I remember that uh, him coming out of the car with a smile and I think I can see the smile that he was enjoying that car drive, right? Coming from Chennai, driving down, meeting and uh, I think and then showing off his new crutches. <laughs> and I think lately I saw the video on uh, YouTube of his new showing off his scooter. <laughs> so, so that was, that was uh, I think, yeah. that was him. Uh, but one thing I wanted to share uh, here was um, very interestingly, uh, the name which came up, right, before Inclusive Planet came as a name, the name was Enable Planet. 
because enable India and inclusive planet kind of it was it should be enable planet planet and all that. And more and more, basically today I was thinking about what does it mean. Uh, I'm like while, while Rahul was there, I think he has worked on making the planet inclusive. I think a lot of things about laws, copyrights, inclusion, and all that. And I think today it is enable planet, right? So uh, that was one thing I just think. But I think we can keep thinking of a lot of things like that, and I can keep uh, having a lot of memories. The other thing basically come to my mind is, um, I don't know from the time it has been com uh, coming and I've been thinking, always comes, uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this movie of Rajesh Khanna and uh, Amitabh Bachchan, Anand, right? And uh, I always just, that voice keeps coming in my mind, Babu Mashai, I hate tears, right? And it was like, I always kind of, Rahul Bhai, I hate tears. It's, I don't know what, what's happening, it's been running in my mind. and. Uh, this is what I just wanted to share. I, I'm not a long talker, but these are the two things I wanted to make sure, make, just share with all of you about the enable planet and uh, this thought which is coming to my mind. Yeah. Um, I am the classmate of Rahul now, so not known him for 20 years. Many of my batchmates are here. Um, it's also, uh, <clears throat> and I can say for most of them that the journey that Rahul traveled in the last five to seven years in Inclusive Planet and all of that, you know, we would sort of hear about it, but never had had no knowledge of the impact and the sheer, I think, quality of, of work that he had done. Um, so when I spoke to Lawrence, uh, you know, this was at the time we went to Kotam and came back. One thing that I think Rahul's death left us with was, and as Lawrence so eloquently put it, that you know, Rahul must be sitting somewhere, looking at all of us shedding so many tears and having a really good laugh, right? So, I mean, and 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 that really is is what I think I wanted to sort of talk about is the fact that when you sort of press the rewind button on the tape and run now for 20 years the person that, that we knew him, it's almost always with, uh, there, is, there is a very, very light sort of touch to, to everything that he did. Uh, to me personally, <coughs> uh, and I know this for a couple of classmates of mine, if entering law school many, many years ago was a culture shock. Meeting Rahul Cheryan was putting your hand in the electricity grid or something. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> I mean, Rahul had a way of, you know, sort of questioning at, without, you know, in, the, in that, in that in a, that's a perfect photograph, actually, if you looked at it. In his own smiling way, he would sort of get to the heart of everything, you know. And when I look back, and I have spent many, many hours with him in the hostel, um, you know, chatting about, about life and other things. This was between 95 and 98. And yeah, I mean, the politest term I could use for Rahul at that time is unorthodox, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I think if I had called him the mischievous devil, I think the devil would take it as a huge compliment. Rahul did so many things that were so unconventional and that sort of you know shattered so many of the of the deep beliefs that that people like us held dear to while growing up uh, you know and 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 so so many stories you know but I, <laughs> and rahul and me were complete polar opposites he always tried to get me to hear to the music of doors and led zeppelin and i would tell him what is all this i don't understand all this stuff but you know, he was he was always somebody who who sort of pushed you, pushed you into areas that you know. Of course, you know, hindsight is a great teach, great sort of you know tool to have when you sort of rewind the tape and look back at all those events and memories. Um, and Rahul was just incredible when he was in college. He just cut through so many of the things. One of the thing was attending class and attending it on time. <laughs> Rahul had an unconventional notion of attending class, which was attending class and going to sleep while we student took notes. And I don't want to talk about where he went to sleep in the class. <laughs> uh, so many, so many of these, of these things, right? 
again, see, some of these themes are just so universal that, that he spoke about. Rahul, I think, uh, by instinct and by training, was a trained bass guitar player, sort of steeped in, in, in the knowledge of rock music. And I still remember that, you know, for people on the Eastern music side, he would so seamlessly sort of transcend those barriers and do these fusion things, which all of us knew that he was the one, it was really his vision that sort of put it all together. Uh, you know, and again, if you look back at all those years, he did it with such a, you know, with such a lightness and incredible. Uh, the other thing that I think stays back in my mind as, as I rewind that tape is that, I mean, you know, is that Rahul had no, um, I, I don't know the correct word, but I guess angst or, or you know, some kind of a grudge for, uh, for where he came from. And I'll tell you this in the context of, you know, sporting ability. So Arvind spoke about him playing cricket. If you ever played table tennis with Rahul, or you played cricket in the in the corridors with him, in, in those small confined spaces, and the way he would bat, it was very obvious that he was a man blessed with exceptional sporting ability. And every time that, that we would speak privately, you know, we would say, you know, how does he react to sort of not having now have the tools to translate that onto the bigger screen, but, but into the bigger stage. But Rahul never had that. I remember that all of us would go to play cricket and, you know, and some of us are here. And Rahul would always come in his car to watch. He would always be there to encourage. And so, you know, so that was one Rahul that, that I knew. The Rahul that was playful, the Rahul that sort of cut to the chase, sort of, you know, told you to really enjoy the journey rather than sort of focusing on where you wanted to go, as, as, as all of us were so focused when, when we were studying in college. And one thing that, that I think as I graduated from college that left me was, here was a guy that really marched to a different beat. And the word unorthodox again comes back to mind. The second phase when I got to know Rahul was after he, after we all started work in Bombay with our careers. Uh, and again, all of us would, you know, sort of be so obsessed about this idea of building a mainstream career, going it, uh, you know, sort of going there and sort of saying, you know, we did this, we did that. And uh, Rahul again uh, was a man I, I, I did not share a room with, but I spent many evenings at the YMCA in Mumbai, sitting down and talking and chatting about life. And often he was the one who where I saw that, that change in the man from being this complete light, you know, sort of lightness of spirit, this, this, you know, this sort of devil may care kind of guy to a man who I found reflective, a man whom I, who I found sort of could see things sort of far farther than most of his peers could. Uh, and, uh, and some of those chats uh, have, left, have left a deep impression on my mind. But I think his message really was that, you know, that, that for all, and we do a lot of things on, on our daily life. And his, his main point, I guess, always was that, you know, learn to enjoy what you do. And if you're not enjoying what you do on a daily basis, really find something else that you really enjoy doing what you do. But I often used to ask a question back in reverse to him, which was, you know, Rahul, what is it that you want to do? What is the impact that you want to leave apart from being this absolutely great guy that all of us have known? And as I always suspected, I think Rahul answered that question spectacularly in the last five to seven years to changing himself to being this, uh, this very, very respected disability rights lawyer and activist, which I think for most of us classmates who were not touched with him, this comes as, 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 uh, I mean, I wouldn't say the term surprise, but you know, so when we hear it, we just nod our head in acknowledgement that, yeah, if Rahul put his mind to it, he was always capable of leaving this deep impact. The third thing that I think I really want to talk about is uh, something more personal. That I think in the last few years, 
uh, I was, uh, you know, the recipient of what I believe was uh, Rahul's affection. Uh, I saw a third side to Rahul, which again, you know, was came, which again was was something that that left a very very deep impact on me. Um, <clears throat> again, you know, for a man who I think battled a couple of illnesses. He was always ready to help, and I recognize this because many years ago I happened to take uh, my mother to a hospital in Chennai, and and I didn't tell him about it. But as soon as he got to know, Rahul had this way of doing a ref check on the doctor, figuring out what the disease was, figuring out what's the best diagnostic center in the world, calling you, and all this without me ever asking him to sort of do anything or or sort of reaching out. And Rahul, for me personally, was a man who always picked up the phone and called me. Once in three months, I would always get that call asking me, "How am I doing? What's happening? Uh, where's where's it headed?" I've actually in the last few years also driven down and sort of spent a couple of days uh, with with the family in Chennai. And and really, I think for all of you. that's the other thing that i that i wanted to speak about which no one does i think rahul was very lucky to have the kind of family that he did um of course you know rahul's sister rupa married one of our own probably isaac from the batch of 98 and of course rahul done to marry anjana a senior senior of ours from and and why i am mentioning that today is i know it's so if you sort of look at rahul's life and let of I think the last few years that that Rahul spent as a family man, surrounded as he was by Robbie and Rupa's kids, I think um, I think he cherished that a lot. The fact that he had this sort of large family around him that that grounded him and and you know and sort of you know gave him that that sense of belonging. And I think somewhere that I think had a huge impact in sort of him sort of very naturally. becoming uh, you know this 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 third avatar that i spoke about you know sort of the caring almost elder brotherly kind of and the, and that's the beauty about rahul you see i was in touch with him he was in touch with me but there are a couple of one of my other classmates who also went through a fairly tough time medically and i discovered that now that rahul got to know of that he reached out again did this whole thing of you know sort of calling him figuring out what it was so i mean the reason i'm saying all these personal things is you know that that i want all of you to think that that you know that rahul was so much more i mean you know he was like uh, and again as i said i i speak without any knowledge of the deep impact he's had on the disability law side and all of that so and again and then when you think back upon it i think you know these are all memories that sometimes form a lump in your throat but <laughs> those lumps tend to go away very quickly as soon as you picture that you're it's rahul you're talking about you you had to smile when you had to talk about rahul <coughs> and and really you know and and whenever i go through through situations where you know you you tend to take yourself very seriously the situations around you very seriously i think really you have to look back at at rahul and where he started 20 years ago and how he went through life and i think uh, that holds a great message i mean you can you can sort of choose to imbibe and live that message or you can choose not to but you cannot ignore that there is a message there that is so strong and so alive you know they they often say that uh, when a man uh, is not there how do you what do you judge him by and they say that it's not the value of the wealth he left he leaves behind but really the amount of genuine tears that were shed for him and i think having gone to kota i'm having come here and all of that i can safely say that i think rahul died a very very rich man and really i think when i look back 
when I, when I look back upon uh, upon him not being there, I think that he didn't have to go. But if he if he actually had to, I think <laughs> I think this is about as good as it gets. I think I think he would have been very happy. And as I, as I, as I told Lawrence that you know he would be sitting around somewhere saying. I mean, I can't imagine Gautam and Lawrence and everyone else speaking so seriously about him. Uh, yeah, and I guess, you know, when, at least for, I, so I speak for a lot of us and say that, you know, to us, Rahul will always be very sort of a living and breathing memory. So it's, it's, it's never a goodbye. Because often you look back upon what you shared with him. And either just the emotional resonance of, of those of those moments shared or just the sheer playfulness of the memories that he left you with, I think uh, are, a, are a deep treasure that all of us will carry. Thank you. Jaina and uh, I actually uh, got to know Rahul uh, initially during college through Sudhir but uh, that was just during the initial phases where uh, you know uh, we were hanging out with all their college friends and but really I got to know Rahul uh, at a much closer level uh, during the last two three years maybe three or four years uh, when I started uh, myself getting very involved in disability law work and initially uh, you know Rahul had his I mean he I think he still continued to have a, quite a vibrant IP practice and you know we would be on and off in touch but as uh, he got uh, totally involved into uh, doing a lot of disability law work and so did I it was uh, you know it was he who reached out and kind of started um, getting in touch with me and said that, you know, uh, why don't we look at, why don't we work together? And initially, you know, for me that was really quite a surprise because you don't often, um, you know, you don't often see people who reach out to other people who are working on the same field and say that, okay, let's, you know, you're working on this, I'm working on this, let's work on it together. Can we, can we share ideas? Can we collaborate? And I mean, there are very, very few people who do that. And uh, Rahul uh, really reached out. And as we, you know, we did a lot of work together, uh, you know, review. I mean, this is really to people uh, who, who knew what he was uh, really involved in, you know, looking at the new disability draft that was being discussed, looking at new decisions, um, looking at some of the other initiatives he was working on. Um, you know, he was always there. There would suddenly be a call saying that, hey, this has happened. Why don't we write a paper in response to that? And, uh, you know, it was always so, you know, so forthright and so casual that there was no formality to it that, you know, you needed to think about it because it was just so spontaneous and forthright. And uh, uh, what, what was really uh, uh, different and unique is that, um, you know, like working in if you're working in any rights-based work, you know, for example, disability rights work that that we were all working in, <coughs> you could uh, you could see that there were very few there were very few lawyers who were really uh, thinking, analyzing what was happening, what were the new laws suggested, what were the drafts, and Rahul was really really doing that painstakingly, you know. And uh, that was just such a refreshing breath, uh, you know, like a breath of fresh air to see in the moment. Because while, I mean, as a lawyer uh, for myself, you know, when I would be in uh, discussion groups and gatherings, you know, there would be really passionate uh, kind of exchanges with all the disability rights activists, and very rightly so. But, you know, at some point as a lawyer, I would think, sit back and think, you know, everyone's like so passionate, but we're not really discussing, what, we're not really analyzing the real nitty gritties. And, you know, I could really discuss that with Rahul and Rahul would, Rahul would see that. And uh, so, you know, it was, we did a lot of work together and a lot of initiatives came from him. And 
Um, I, I think some of the work uh, that he did, uh, you know, with Inclusive Planet, with CIS, uh, some of the work, you know, that we all did collab collaboratively together was really, uh, uh, you know, stuff that uh, a lot of people in the disability rights movement had not done. Um, and so in that sense, I think, uh, you know, it is really, um, you know, the kind of analytical work that he was putting on the draft bill. I mean, just for some of you who know his work, that he was working on the draft bill, it was just really important work and those notes and the papers that he worked on, that all of us worked on together with his initiative. I, I mean, we have to see where it goes, but I do think, you know, it is uh, making a serious, you know, contribution to the debate that is going on. And, uh, you know, he, he, while he was, while he was uh, interested to do this work and he was doing uh, all his uh, kind of writing and campaigning for the new law, uh, it was also quite interesting to see his, uh, his kind of reaction and responses in these gatherings. I remember when we had both gone to Delhi for uh, the final consultation on the draft disability bill, which was like the final consultation with lawyers before the bill was going to be uh, kind of presented to the committee. This is the, the, the proposed law on disability rights. And, uh, you know, we were sitting there with about 20, 30 lawyers and from all kinds of disability communities. and everyone was really almost at blows because you know there were so many conflicting opinions and there were heated kind of arguments and accusation all over the room and this was supposed to be like a formal consultation and Rahul was sitting next to me and chuckling away and uh, you know uh, totally kind of uh, uh, you know of course he was he was seriously involved but he was kind of totally sitting back and laughing at the you know the way people were losing their cool and so he had this kind of ability to kind of actually you know he could sit there and laugh at at you, you he could laugh at himself and laugh at you know we, i don't think a lot of us have the ability to laugh at ourselves to see you know sometimes uh, you know how things play out and he could kind of sit back and do that and i remember him telling me you know i was getting really agitated about some of the suggestions being made and i was telling him that you know we can't let these suggestions go into the draft and he would be like relax you don't say these suggestions tell me, I will make the suggestions because the movement won't take you seriously because you're not disabled, but I will make them. And if I make them, it will be taken seriously. So, I mean, you know, so he was just really, uh, you, you know, it was, it was just wonderful to see uh, uh, someone who's so passionately involved, but at the same time can sit back and, and uh, you know, see things, uh, 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 you know, without getting so serious and, uh, uh, you know, about it. And I think, uh, I, I think uh, you know, the, I mean, over and above all that he did, <coughs> I think even in his, uh, the fact that he reached out to so many people in his work, I mean, I'm, I'm only talking because about his work because that's my uh, most intense interaction with him. And I think the, the ability that he had to reach out to people who were working in the field, um, uh, you know, and to include them, and I think that's a great ability. Because, you know, for example, the disability rights movement is, you know, it talks about inclusiveness, but it is quite exclusive in the sense you have to be someone disabled, you have to ha be, have a family member who's disabled, only then you claim to know what disability rights are. And I don't think he had any of those barriers. Thanks. Hi, uh, I'm Ruben. Uh, he was a friend of mine from, uh, from school. I'm going to read out uh, a prepared speech because I still am kind of scatterbrained when talking about RC impromptu. So, um, so <clears throat> yeah, all of us have seen things in, in RC that, uh, that we love. He was a charmer um, when he wanted to be, an altruist in the true sense of the word, um, a sharp mind, though. Um, prone to spewing uh, spectacular bullshit, you know, sometimes. But I could go on, on and on about, you know, his uh, um, positive traits, which uh, would be to the, you know, to the tune of the, of the, of this gathering, but I'd rather not. Um, because for one thing, Asi would smirk if he heard it for sure. All the while, um, secretly probably enjoying the attention that he, that he gets. Um, Asi and I go back a long way. Um, we were friends in school. 
um, he was the best man at my wedding um, and I guess the uh, best man at my divorce or the worst man at my divorce. Um, <clears throat> um, innumerable episodes of uh, inebriation on various intoxicants, um, juvenile pranks and a lot of comic performances that continued into midlife. Um, in fact, R.C. used to say, probably in jest, that uh, because when I got my piercings uh, late into my 30s, uh, he would say that I have a midlife crisis. And uh, what he said, he had his midlife crisis when he was 20, I mean, prescient, you know, to some extent, but that's what he used to say. Um, in, sc in school, you know, chess games and a lot of things, you know, Shakespeare and Golding and um, a 20 kilometer trek to Silent Valley where R.C. was carried on his classmates' back, including Ravi Ostruli. Uh, many business ventures, of which only some lost money, and uh, life lessons, late night singing sessions, cakes and cookies baked with uh, interesting herbs, <laughs> you know, hooliganism and hedonism and heroism and activism now, trying to change the world, all the while secretly polishing up the uh, Nobel Peace Prize speech which um, was a whole plan. I don't know if you guys knew this, but that was, that was a plan. Um, anyway, so, but for the most part, it was, it was great fun, you know, being with RC, and um, it's been tough, you know, kind of <clears throat> um, coping with, with his loss. Um, and, um, but looking back, you know, RC was quite fortunate, again, as uh, Gautam said, to come from a pretty privileged background, um, very effective support system in terms of his parents as he grew up with his cancer, and it's then, you know, dealing with its after effects. Um, and then, you know, after after college he got luckier. Um, he fell in love and got married to a most remarkable woman. And, you know, we, you know, we used to talk about all kinds of things, and so my relationship advice to Rahul, I've, I've stopped giving relationship advice after the, after the divorce, but <laughs> b before that, um, <clears throat> So I mean, we would say that you know, I don't know how you how you how you managed to talk her into uh, doing this, especially after knowing you for this long, for her to agree. It's like amazing. I mean, say something about your uh, sales skills, but you know. But but then again, you know, she's now you know, she's smarter, stronger, way better looking, and way more successful than you are. So you better like work hard at you know kind of you know, kind of keeping it together. And so, and he would say, yeah, yeah. You know, Dude, I know. I mean, I'm the one who basically pitched this. I, I, I know. I know. And so he was, and he was. He was. You know, it was a. I think it was a key turning point in his life. As again, um, Gautam noted, there was a point at which you know he was going at a pretty breakneck speed in terms of. I mean, not exactly sure where he was going, but then um, things kind of stabilized, and might have been, um, you know, age might have been. Um, his family, um, but he got serious, and then, and you know, after the after after these guys got together, Anjana and Asi got together. Um, also started. Um, I mean, he was he was thriving. I mean, he could he could really see the see the difference. You know, post teens. You know, once he, um, and I would see him coming from Chennai to Bangalore in his uh, car, which probably was cleaned up when it was in Chennai, and then. It would have this picnic basket, uh, basket full of uh, food, and then kind of logically organized for the three days that he would be traveling, you know, in different kind of wraps and um, um, so. And then he started wearing, you know, laundered shirts and all of that. So and uh, started wearing underclothes. I think <laughs> was, all of that. So anyway, so the the um, so the, the so the, the the I think. You know, all the, I mean, apart from uh, a lot of the stuff, she also was kind of bringing home the bacon when Arsi was, and I, I mean, some of us are trying to change the world, I mean, at least for Arsi's home. So all these schemes are also possible, you know, because of, uh, also because of Anjana, and, you know, I just want to salute her on that. Um, and um, after he, he passed away, um, we've heard, a lot of things about you know how RC was good at a, at a lot of things, and you know there he was. And to me, the um, his greatest 
ability was actually to bring people together, um, attracting different kinds of people, you know, yeah, very young kids who would, uh, who he would, you know, hold different audiences for at night in his flat, you know, wherever he lived, to, um, you know, very established business folks, to, you know, his colleagues from school and college, bring them together and then, you know, being the, the catalyst, um, so he was more of a, in one sense, I, would, I always think of him as more of a thinker than a doer. Uh, at the same time, you know, bringing people together is, is no mean task. I mean, he would go on a trip, um, you know, and then come back with practically, you know, a Rolodex of uh, contacts um, that it was, it was pretty um, unusual. So I think, I think that was a key skill that we had. And then, of course, that was why we again made this amazing plan to have the uh, ultimate political party with Nasi as the uh, key uh, candidate and the spokesperson and the poster child. But then again, <clears throat> um, yeah. So I just want to kind of, uh, I, I could go on and on because of the, this, this long association in terms of um, work as well as um, from when we were, you know, growing up. But I just want to kind of wrap this up on a, I mean, I, the, the work aspect of, of RC is pretty well known, and you know, um, but the sense of loss that um, you know, I'm sure the family feels, and uh, some of his close friends feel, is it's going to take a while for it to go. And um, to a large extent, I, I, I think it's also kind of decoupled from his achievements at work. It, it was um, also, you know, a lot of it is it's just about him as a person, and you know somebody that you kind of grew to like and so um, so I'll see I, and I would talk privately you know pretty much every day you know he would call me or I'd call him and plotting and prodding and poking fun of each other and um, everybody else under the sun um, and then there were plans and promises of retiring um, of course after fixing up the world um, you know retiring in a ripe old age to adjacent homes on the banks of um, of, of the Minichal River in good old Khartoum, and of road trips and off-road trips and racing on the autobahn and plans to become ridiculously rich uh, and then, you know, starting the political party that we we're talking about. But I guess these things won't happen anymore in, in, in the way we thought it would. Um, yes, I mean, the best laid plans of mice and men and all that, so, you know, um, Still, it, it's it's quite tough. Um, it, it's 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 heartening to hear that you know the plans being made to uh, carry his work forward and you know uh, all of that. But for me personally, I'm, I'm still you know finding it very difficult to just cope with 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 the fact that he's he's not around and so um, never thought I'd you know say this. Uh, but damn, like he's just gone, and you know I already miss him. So that's it. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Shanti Raghun. Uh, along with Deepesh, both of us run Enable India organization for people, for the economic independence and dignity of persons with disability. Uh, before I talk about Rahul, uh, I'd like to read uh, something that Dr. Sam, who worked very closely with him, uh, had to say about Rahul. Uh, because what, here, Dr. Sam is in Bombay, and I, I just wrote to him and told him, hey, do you want to share something? <coughs> uh, it is with a very heavy heart that I'm sharing these thoughts. Rahul's passing is mourned by so many persons he came in touch with. It's just been four years that I came to know Rahul on the copyright issue, and over time came to love and respect his vibrancy, commitment, sense of direction, and never say die attitude. The last few months saw him expand his work, and it was with immense satisfaction that one could see new alliances, networks, and a sense of purpose developing within <laughs> dozens of hitherto oftentimes unconnected persons and organizations working to build inclusion in the disability space. I spoke to him just a few days prior to his passing, and in spite of his high fever, 
His crystal clear vision and thought was ready to be seen in the conversation. Yes, physically he's no more with us and we will be denied his physical presence. The impact he brought, however, will live on and although we may not be able to finish the agenda, we will work towards completing it. My prayers are with his family in these extremely trying hours. I pray for Rahul's soul that it receives the peace it deserves. Sam Tarapurawala, director of the uh, Xavier's Resource Center for the Visually Challenged. So let me now talk about Rahul. Uh, I, I don't know, some five, six years back, uh, maybe because of Nirmita, I can't remember, I think it was because of Nirmita that she called me and told me that uh, there's a gentleman, Rahul, who wants to kind of talk about some idea, blah, 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 and very difficult for us to ever find time, you know. You're working, uh, you know, in non-stop for 12 hours and then, okay, somehow you fit it in and here comes this gentleman and uh, uh, I think the connect was immediate. He was talking about this thing, you know, this, uh, which was inclusive planet, basically. You know, he was, uh, uh, he was developing the idea. And uh, the thing is, I think the connect was immediate because uh, I'm kind of a ch childlike person. And here's Rahul, and for everybody knows, you know, he's, he's bubbling. He's, you know, he's got this idea and he's, uh, so we started connecting, you know, at that level. I'm like, yeah, you know, this sounds awesome. Wow. You know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and... <laughs> I think uh, this has gone back uh, to Chennai and, uh, you know, so uh, it was an instant connect because um, he was developing the idea and I don't think he knew it was a vision. You know, entrepreneurs come to know later that it's a vision. Somebody tells them, you know, you had a vision. You know, I, I think uh, uh, you, you, you're you just developing the idea and it's uh, it's new to you. You're you're trying to understand it. And he was telling me that a lot of people were telling him that what the, what, what kind of idea are you having? It's really crazy. It doesn't make sense. The connect was because what he was talking about is really, uh, at a very personal level, dignity for people with disability. You know, because that's what Inclusive Planet is all about. At various levels, there, were, there are a lot of things that have not yet happened in Inclusive Planet, but it was all about uh, dignity for persons with disability. You know, so the connect was immediate, obviously. And I think, uh, I don't know, I feel that it definitely gave him uh, the sense of purpose that, yes, I should continue with that. Because I think sometimes you need somebody to tell you that. Now, I don't know whether it was us or not, uh, whether it was me and Deepesh or, I don't know whether it was, but, uh, you know, whether we contributed to that. But all I know is that uh, he went back definitely, you know, charged, which anyway he would have been, uh, one way or the other. But, uh, and I think Inclusive Planet then grew from strength to strength. And uh, I'm not one for memories. I don't actually never, I never remember things in chronological order, key, you know. But uh, all I know is that uh, that inclusive planet started growing, and uh, after some time, you know, we would meet again, brainstorm. I remember it was on readable dot in. That was also awesome, you know. So uh, every time we were connecting on these uh, the awesome idea of inclusive planet, and I don't know, I don't think even though we were thinking it's going to be awesome that the social networking would take off the way it would, right? Because uh, you know the way pe persons with vision impairment. Uh, could actually net, you know, have social networking of their own. And then the best part was, uh, I think uh, Rahul uh, was like a child who suddenly realized he has a toy, you know. He'll come and say, you know what, there are people in Turkey, they are also loving it, you know. And then he'll talk about uh, another country that uh, got on to include, I think Turkey was there, Saudi Arabia, whatever. So every time there was a sense of joy, uh, a quizzicalness, like how did this happen, you know. And, uh, you know, so we'd all get excited, oh, wow, Turkey's on, wow, you know. Uh, and it just went on that way. And I don't know when that uh, change happened, but I think he then realized also that he, uh, the contribution he can do via law. You know, I don't uh, remember that happening when Inclusive Planet started, you know. And I think suddenly he looked at his crutches and realized, oh, my God, there's power in this. As in, as a person with physical disability, I will be, and, and as a lawyer, I can contribute that much more, you know. So I think the sense of purpose became stronger and stronger regarding, move, you know, moving more into disability law. And then I saw the, the three tri triumvirates of Inclusive Planet, you know, Ruben handling the software part and Rahul doing his merry work in law and Sachin doing all the other development work, etc. Uh, and I just want to tell you one thing. I feel that uh, at a professional level, uh, See, uh, Jaina mentioned it very correctly, you know, that uh, in the disability world, we have a lot of passionate people. But uh, 
The reason we connected also is actually for us at Enable India, we feel that every day is a celebration of the human spirit. You know, because every day when a person with disability uh, uses some solution, overcomes his challenges, and is able to do something, yeah, you know, go for it. Like you feel really awesome about it. You know that uh, this person could actually do it. So Rahul feels the same way I feel. You know, and and so in one sense there was this. Um, he has a lightness about it, and that lightness is very important because you should take your work seriously, but not yourself too seriously also. You know, and so when when he would go to perhaps because I've not been where he did the work in law, right? We we've not been there. But I think uh, in the disability sector, we need that lightness uh, so that we do the work seriously, but not take ourselves seriously, so that we can take the discussion forward. And when we keep reminding ourselves that, uh, you know, when we can actually have dialogue, and also when you can be a little with this irrepressible spirit that, you know, what's going on here, you know? When you can have that also, the, the work will keep continuing. So I think that is the biggest uh, issue I feel that, him not being there, I, I hope there's somebody else, uh, because you were talking about you all want to continue the work. I think we need that lightness, which is about uh, you're extremely focused on what you're going to do and you're not going to budge from it, but you kind of need that lightness of spirit, which he had. So uh, I want to tell you one thing. I'm very irritated. He started in the middle of, uh, I don't know, after two, three years, he started calling me Shandi ma'am. Why? I ask you, why? <laughs> you know. <laughs> So I got damn irritated. I mean, till now we were Shanti and uh, whatever, Rahul and all that. So I got damn irritated. I started calling him Rahul sir, you know, uh, but with a lot of venom, okay, because why did I, I become Shanti ma'am, you know, suddenly? So in any case, so that will go unanswered. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, for me actually, uh, for the last two, three years, because of a couple of death in the family and the close person, uh, close, uh, our uh, Vadya, uh, what do I say, Guruji, a herd passed away and now it's Rahul. But for the last two, three years itself, I've been looking at death and trying to understand what it means. And uh, I, I see that there are changing seasons. I'm kind of philosophical. So I see that in life, everything is a renewal. You know, there's a change. There's nothing which is constant. You know, you have summer, you have winter. Things are always changing. There's a renewal continuously. And somewhere I've started feeling that death is actually a renewal. Uh, and in many ways, uh, it reinforces some of the things to me, and I'd like to share that with you, that what really Rahul brought was uh, living life to the fullest every day. And I think we need to remind ourselves of that. You know, we need to live life every day to the fullest. And if I think you've had an association with Rahul, if you can take that back, I think, you know, he's done his work. You know, not that he think, you know, not that he thought he was doing his work, but, <laughs> you know, I think that's uh, the first thing, that you live life to the fullest every day. And perhaps that childlike spirit, which is like, you know, oh my God, I actually did this. You know, this happened. You, you're just having a sense of joy in everything you do because you didn't expect the result. You're just enjoying doing the work. And then you're like, oh my God, it looks like Turkey is on and that happened and this happened. And you're just having a sense of joy and a feeling of awe or a, a feeling of surprise that it actually happened. So I think that's the second thing we need to take. Uh, you know, if you've been associated with Rahul, I think you better do it. And, uh, and I, think, uh, uh, I think, you know, that's, that's all we need to do. You know, if we can just uh, live life to the fullest every day, be childlike, uh, I think, uh, you know, that's, that's the message we need to take from Rahul. And uh, I, I don't think, uh, I, I'm not a person for memories. I'm only going to, uh, if I think Rahul, I just see the smile. I start smiling. That's, that's the only thing that happens to me, you know. And, uh, uh, that's that's all for me. Rahul is that smile, that irrepressible spirit, and uh, I'm extremely. I don't want to get emotional, but I'm really happy that I met Rahul. Thank you. Thanks for that. If there is anybody else who would like to say something.
just to perhaps repeat what Ar- Arvind said, uh, Rahul was an inspiration to all of us at uh, the Center for Internet and Society and also to his colleagues at Inclusive Planet and he will always be that inspiration. Uh, I hope all of you will stay and uh, join us for dinner. Thank you so much. <laughs>